Not so All much. the words he said were English, but none of the sentences made sense. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> the words yeah. were all there, but they didn't so, mean anything. <laughs> just so you know, so he started talking really quick in kind of Egyptian, and it was just gibberish. Of course, now, Dean, you're smart enough. What's your intelligence? Uh, 16. And okay, so I'll let you guys language. go with it. Yeah, you guys go with it then. Keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll try two or three of the other, the other languages that uh, I have. And if, if you don't have any bestial languages for the, from the half elf, I'll, I'll switch right back to, to trade common. Trade common. Um, Com common. So you. I um, guess you're to myself. I, Nolani. 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 Ita. Ita that? Ita. 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 Well, Ita you. No, 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 no. Me, Ita. <laughs> no, be eaten. Eaten, oh. Ita. Mm. Almost though. <laughs> uh, too close. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, I put my hand up and pick a, and let water run through my hand, and I'm like, look at you quizzically. Like, what were you in in the in the ocean? Why? Why? Now, you would know, Carly, you found some debris. This guy was probably a survivor. You would know as much. Okay. Well, what is, unless scale. your intelligence is really low, maybe. How low should my intelligence be? <laughs> if it was like eight or nine, you, would, oh. you might. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but above that, you would, you know, you're, you've grown up in the ocean. You, you know that there's ships out there and some of them get wrecked. Anyway. Okay. How long I ask you? your ship black no long many oars stays very tight to, to land very very close to land hmm. S big storm blew us away from away from yeah, land yeah, yeah. The, the ship not, not good in deep water crack breaking pieces there's land close carly i'm gonna give you 100 xp <laughs> there for okay. nailing uh remembering all that now dean you might not be aware of what happened there but anyway she may tell you any at some point but something happened now by the way carly the, okay. the whale was taking you to an island where you could replenish fresh water and rest for a day okay and but it has to go feed so i'm going to say it's going to drop you off at this little island okay and then it goes to feed and it's going to go eat squids or whatever and it's a beautiful little tropical island just about the size of a football field and <laughs> he yeah drops you off but it's apparently got a spring or pools of water and and, and there you find to your delight that there is a lot of uh crabs and 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 other and clams and all sorts it's teeming with all sorts of stuff and you realize that this this young woman prob in her teens and you're just amazed by her like she, you're just like what in the hell is this person this sea goddess that showed up on a whale and brought you <laughs> to, saved you and this whale seems to be its friend and they like before the whale takes off you see this thing this uh nolani kind of hug it as best you can a whale <laughs> and, and kiss it fondly before the whale gives her a big wink with the eyeball about the size of a freaking grapefruit <laughs> and then the whale turns and disappears quickly and then she she's just immediately runs up and starts to she just goes oh it's perfect and you came here a couple years ago you came here with the whales on, on a trip with them so you know of this island and you right away it's like you remember that there's like you go find some lob, lobster right away yeah, I'll go like lift up rocks and like pick up a handful of little crabs and like hand them, try and show them to you. Like, and, crabs, food. And you find big ones, like you know where to look. You're like, yeah. and uh, start she, foraging and scrounging right away. 
um, and any being more of a sophisticated guy, any possible way of cooking? Uh, I don't expect you to understand cooking. Uh, hold on a minute. Maybe I should cook. Yeah. You cook. I, uh, you cook, I find. And before long, <laughs> she's brought you a couple snakes. And she really likes them. She's like these, these they're a real delicacy with her people, apparently. Forest bleed snakes. these, bleed these, blood gives them to you. And then she also comes back with some of these kind of slug like, grub like things that she cr peeled back from some bark and found. There's also two big lobsters and uh, various clams. And she goes to work deshelling, cracking things open, breaking stuff apart. She hands you stuff and uh, you guys kind of bond in a sort of little way. It's really kind of weird. Uh, she darts around gracefully doing stuff, and you're a slower, a bit older. Yeah. And just but, uh, kind of out of your element, too. Like you are, oh, and, you're, you're quite, yeah, and you're pretty tired. And, but it really replenishes you and puts a smile on your face just to watch this young person zipping around. Like, and it's strange because you've never seen anything like it. Nothing at all like that. Not in the desert. <laughs> no and no no human being like if she's human you're not sure uh she has her ears are a bit pointed you noticed after you got a glance at her and her eyes have this sheen normally you know her kind that you know of like especially the raj everybody has black eyes except for a few that have green and a few have blue of course you know yeah but mostly black and then but she has this sort of green tinge or no what were your eyes again yeah they're green yeah and but they have a real kind of emerald quality to them to make that stand out in her black features. Yeah. Sea spirit? Like spirit of the ocean? You could give her a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> sea sprite. Oh, we've already got a sprite. She, she seems to be a, a child of the sea or something, but anyway, mm -hmm. she seems it's your miracle. And when she has time, she goes and she finds clay and kind of like coats her hair in it, the braids. Oh, <laughs> that'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should send you a picture. It's like a... Definitely sea spirit. Sea spirit is, is friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys rest for the night. You're exhausted and you just can't stay awake. You've, been, you've had the last day and a half have drained you. Uh, now, as to you, you spend quite a bit of time frolicking around the island, investigating things, but have to, you have to rest as well. And you guard him, and you kind of look at him as he's sleeping. You built a little shelter for both of you guys. You watched her just zip around. Like, she, her survival skills astonished you. Like, she wove together this roof because it might rain tonight a bit, and it took her only about 15 minutes, and she built this uh Interwoven leaf, leaf, leaf. Yeah. Oh, nice. And she un unwound this rope she had twined around her body that, and it turned out to hold up stuff and dry out clothing and so on. And she just moved around quickly and you, you went to sleep and she watches you for a while and then she curls up after a while and nods off to bed as well. And then you guys are woken by the dawn and you can hear the, the puff of the, the whale's flute. Uh-huh. And it's already ready to go. It's back, and you're not sure. I'm okay. not sure, Dean, what you're ready for. If you you can't really stay in this island, you're thinking, are they going to leave me it's, here? It's, there's not much here. You can't you can't leave me. Now you were going to leave him here, Carly. It's optional. <laughs> it's up to you. You were thinking about it last night when you were watching him because you were thinking, what am I going to do with this this old fool? Yeah. How old is he? Is he like mid thirties? Like, Old, oh, so old. <laughs> <laughs> old to you, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Do you trust him? What's he? What he? You're going now. Remember, you're going to dangerous waters and unknown. So, are you doing him any favors taking him with you? No, but he might do me favors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll wait, and if he comes onto the whale, he does, and if he doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah, well, you got up early and you could have left him basically if you wanted, but you get up and 
he wakes up when you're getting up and about and packing up some few of the foods left over. You have enough to go for another few days packed up and wrapped up in leaves and stuff. Mm-hmm. Wrapped up uh, in packages that stay on your body. So Ita, you see this whale frolicking out there ways and she starts to walk out towards the water and you can see the tide is high at the moment and she's getting out ankle deep water and she turns around and looks at you. Uh, we going back out? Like out there? Like, but there's land here. You stay on land. Not this land. <laughs> There's a, this isn't much of a land. <laughs> Can't leave me here. <laughs> the, 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 this isn't even more than a couple houses. Like, you don't know what a house is. Um, uh, where are we going? <laughs> Simba, then. Simba. Simba, come. The Simba there? <laughs> I start walking out into the water. Yeah, you have to swim out to her. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Uh, that could be challenging for some guy from the desert. <laughs> yeah, you realize he'll need help. You look and he's, he's obvious. He's not, he's, he's no swimmer. Um, I think I that quick... would be pretty unheard of to me, a per, like a person that doesn't swim. I, oh, yeah, and you're just like, like really? Come on. Uh, give me one second, and I look around. Any dead wood around? Any just a, even a couple foot section of a of a branch of a tree or something that I can hang, hang on to and kick with? <laughs> well, probably yeah. You give me a second, <laughs> you can find a piece of wood, and yeah, it's like okay, let's go. Uh, okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and you flounder out to the whale. And it's waiting, and it, the whale kind of gives out a bit of an exasperated huff as it sees that you brought the uh, human, <laughs> Carly. And it gives right, out this I'll... bellowing, woo, <laughs> resonates to you guys, vibrating. <laughs> I'll talk back to her. <laughs> Ita, Ita. Try it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it yeah. kind of makes this weird kind of Simba sound to you, Ita. <laughs> its name. <laughs> ah. Simba, <laughs> and it turns on its side with one of its flukes up, so you guys can grab the fluke and hop onto its back. Uh huh. And with before you know it, you're riding this whale on the water, and it's it's you're hanging on for dear life. Uh, she's oh, yeah. standing up and she's walking up and back and forth and and checking out like little marks and stuff. And it it turns out that Simba got in a couple fights with some. Uh, squids in the night went she went really deep and did the age-old combat with a couple big giant squids and you can see big sucker marks on her and stuff and there's some wounds near her tail some big nicks in her back tail Mm. bleeding bleeding a bit took some damage Mm. and she has a bit of a black eye (laughs) i'll try and heal her what i can but i not don't really know much in the Oh, but she's she's happy and eager. It seems she's got her fill. She ate a giant squid. <laughs> she won. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Um, you 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 try casting? Me? Yeah. No, I just like walk around and I try putting like herbs on her or rubbing like leaves into it. Like, like okay. I, I clear she clearly well intentioned, but doesn't know what she's doing. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> For healing, yeah. Oh, you know okay. what you're, you're you're druid. You know what you're doing. She knows like a little bit, but like I don't know like a healing spell. Like I just know the sleep's good. I'll rub it in, or like I'll clean that a little. Just very basic. <laughs> There's a couple of, of hooks from from the squids. Yeah, in, in there. We'll peel those suckers out and throw them away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the next for the next day. Uh, this whale makes really quick speed. Like you're, you, you're just like Ita. You're like, wow, we're moving. You, you uh, don't see land again. You're in open water and just moving. And you're not even sure which direction you're going. You're like, I have no idea. Maybe if you have stargazing or something at night, you could see. 
but it doesn't it doesn't look like they're going to let up and they're not going to find land and you're starting to get worried again uh because you've been going for about 15 hours and in the sun and stuff so and i'm hanging on to this fin like it's the <laughs> Well, no, a lot of the time when the water is really calm, and it can actually give you quite a solid platform. Yeah. But uh, when there's a bit of sail or rough, or a little rougher, then you're like, oh, crap. Uh, she seems to have to hold on it once in a while, too. Well, sometimes she jumps off and dives in the water and swims along, and the whale kind of, she moves really fast, but the whale slows down, obviously. Yeah. This would leave her in the dust. <laughs> and then they frolic. They they just frolic for a little while as she swims around. And if they happen to see like a school of sardines or something, she whips out this net and will jump in and scoop a bunch. <laughs> Every now and then, I look back at you as if trying to measure whether or not your friend. I think you are. Mm. But. Mm. Um. Uh, give me one second. Uh, I gotta figure out. I don't then, think I, I don't think I could cast on a whale. I'd have to wait till, because I wanted to see about uh, comprehend languages. Oh, nice. Now you actually have to stop and be able to recharge your spells. You have to kind of pray and do ceremonies and stuff, right? And, so and you know, study you, know, you had a chance on the island there to kind of just freshen up your spells. Probably you could have made a little ad hoc shrine on the sand and got mm -hmm. down and prostrated yourself, whatever you do. And asked, asked your God to send his power. Yep. Yeah, no, that one doesn't, that only does written stuff. So that's, that's not going to help. Um, so you, and you find yourself, uh, admiring this this person and you this old guy i call him an old guy that we could we should say maybe you're pushing 40 or something but he just he seems to he reminds you of of your dad a bit and, and so you guys have you get a bit of a bond going uh his her father by the way was fama okay remember ian's character from way back did you ever play with ian and, and us no we i didn't play in that okay. one okay no. he, he took a half elf uh ranger Okay. Blind in one eye. And then he retired. And he actually did. He retired. He retired to the Pirate Islands. <laughs> and there he, he hooked up with a native and had a child. He hooked up with a local native princess, and that's Carly. <laughs> the offspring. <laughs> and then, so. yeah, anyway, she can tell her story. But uh, over the day, I, you guys get, you talk a bit. She doesn't seem to talk. She's always busy swimming and talking to the whale. And but she'll answer. I, I don't know. You guys could probably talk a bit. You're, you both seem to be feeling on us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, with a broken common, basically we can get the idea that uh, um, the the ship that broke up. Uh, anybody? Did you see anybody else survive off that? No. Nobody. No. Oh. <laughs> Well, you lost least, friends. Uh, no, I was traveling. I'm. I seek knowledge to the north, hmm. information. But they belong to the sea now. Uh, for permanence, uh, permanently, I believe. <laughs> uh. Black ship took my people. Black ships. Black ships. Raider ships? Pirate ships? Mm-hmm. So, they, we are uh, going to find them. Do, do they, uh, Darren, do they come down as far as the Raj, or do the Raj keep them pretty much beat off? No, they don't get there. Uh, they don't raid the Raj. They might do business with the Raj. Yeah. And the black ships, you right away know that yeah, those are the those are slaver ships. Okay. So, yeah, They're notorious for using black sails. Ah, uh, okay. So they're the uh, they're not even pirates. They're they're straight up slavers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, specific. They have slave galleys. They fill up. 
they have one ship that's usually like a destroyer and then another one that's just basically a merchant slave ship with a big hold in it so they can stuff like 200 slaves yeah just enough to to feed and water everybody and that's all they have for cargo and then the rest of the cargo is slaves just get to the port and get yeah get them into the slave market yeah hmm slavers slavers can be very very tough folks mm -hmm. very hard to very hard to deal with at times so, will you help i i don't have a lot to help but i'm i'm not I'm not against helping just just don't know how much help i could be i'm not good in the water what knowledge what knowledge do you want there's a do you know what a library is uh, uh, <laughs> nope <laughs> huge building building full of paper and um information <laughs> yeah totally foreign concepts to you i know yeah all these words <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <it's> shrugging <laughs> nothing uh, nothing nothing no like, <laughs> you're just uh <laughs> so this try to talk passes the day and then evening comes and the the whale just keeps going and you realize that you're just gonna have to hang on. And the, the girl se seems just ready to do that. And she's getting this kind of little harness out and she's attaching it to the main sail or uh, fin. <laughs> main fin, yeah. And uh, it's, you can see that she's actually tying herself a little tiny little hammock. Oh. That sits on there and she crawls into it. It's like a little pouch, almost like a kangaroo pouch that just hangs on the fin. Off to one side. Yep. And you realize that she offers it to you to crawl in there. She's apparently going to just ride the whale. She only has one of these things. It's hers. Sleep for the night? Sleep sun gone time? Mm. Yeah. You sleep first. Um... He's not gonna, or she's not gonna dive in the water all night long. Like, mm -hmm. this guy's real ready to panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whale's gonna disappear. No, the whale just keeps plowing north. Like, yeah. amazing stamina it just goes. Oh, yeah, whales have a, yeah. the stamina on a, on a whale. I wouldn't even want to know what the constitution would be. <laughs> yeah. Um, he doesn't have any other option at this point. He is just going to crawl in there and try and close his eyes and forget everything from the last 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Now, through the night, uh, the weather gets a little bad, and you're woken up at about 4 in the morning. And you guys have a rough time of it for that morning, just staying on, and you're, you're both exhausted. And in the morning, though, you do see... Uh, another island in the distance. This one's bigger. Mm -hmm. And you're able to stop and recover here again. And same thing, but this is unknown area. You've never been this far north, Carly. You've been okay. far. Like every year you travel with, with whales and dolphins way out. Hundreds of miles, hundreds and hundreds of miles. But this is far this you've ever been. And the land still have that jungle look to it. Uh, now as a scholar, you remember something about the Olmans, who were an ancient civilization that had long ago, they were now extinct apparently, but you heard about the Olman Islands and the Olman Pass, you would know this, it separates the Denset Gulf and the Azure Sea. The, the, the sea to the north that I'm supposed to go to, far side. Now yes. that, that's where you guesstimate that you would be going and like once you found out by looking at some stars at night and stuff that you were actually heading north, you estimate that we must be heading toward that area. Now, I'm not going to, you won't, you don't have maps with you and stuff. So you're just going by memory. Yep. And you, you tell her car, you tell Carly about these names of places and she has different names for areas and stuff like areas of the ocean and, and such. But you tell her that this is called the Olman ancient Olman lands. 
And if we pass, there's large islands that we must pass through before we head to the Sea of Azur. It looks Ye like... Uh... Oh, and you were looking for those sails, Carly, remember? Mm -hmm. And you've, you've lost them mm. in the storm and such. You don't know where they are now. And you're not sure where you are. The whale kind of knows in its own way where it is, of course. And the whale has indicated to you that it must go east soon. Mm -hmm. It must leave. And you have to decide. And you have a hunch that the, the black sails are going to go to the Azor Sea. Because you, uh, Dean's character told you that he knows that there's a land called the hold of the sea princes that is in the Azor Sea, which is a, a, a destination for many slaves, for most of the slaves in this place, in the area of Greyhawk. Even many they know that in Egypt, this is where a, big a lot of slaves go there for, from all over. Mm. Big slave traders, pirates, sea, sea princes. Mm. So Rain the whales, every, everybody. The whale says that it can take you to the Omen Islands, the pass area, and they're actually huge islands. They're really big. Uh, and then it has to go on its way. Mm. And you'll be on your own, unless you want to go with it or go back, but you've already committed to quite this sort of one-way trip, kind of. Yeah. No. And you realize no. that this young girl is on a quest to of, of, of a vengeance if, or freedom for people. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> and you know these the slavery situations are huge. You're like, uh, okay, are you sure about this? Yeah, they're, 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 these are like, how do you explain to somebody who's from a small African tribal village what a city is? Like, more villages than five people's hands all in one spot. More this people. many this this many warriors of the black sails <laughs> more people than grains on the ocean or on the beach <laughs> yeah more people than sand on a beach <laughs> i was hoping bill was going to show up but he uh alex kind of wants to play in this adventure as well but uh bill's got the dwarf right Because mm. I've got a couple characters that are on the ship, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. On another ship, I should say. Yeah. What the hell is this? Oh. Yeah, I guess we kind of need them. Yeah, the next part. Now, okay, we no, we we still have a little bit to do, and then we're kind of caught up. Again, the next day, morning, the whale's ready to go. It's fed on whatever it's found. And you guys head back north and into the open ocean again. This is the last stretch before it has to say goodbye at the end of the day. And this is when, as you're heading north, you see Nalani, no, Nalani, Nalani, tense up suddenly. She's looking up and she's up high on the back of the whale. Look, she points and you can see multiple fins coming in at an angle towards the, the whale. Ooh. And they're cutting through the water quickly, your direction. What? What? What are they? Mm. More, more of your friends? More of your mm, people? Sharks. No. Enemies. Kick out. Are they um, the sharks on the surface? Not quite. Their fins are some cutting in and out of the water as they're moving quickly, trying to cut you off. They've smelled you or sensed you for some reason. Still okay. healing wounds. Oh, hey there, Alex. Hey, just popping in. Oh, we're just, uh, yeah, doing a little bit of role playing here. We got these two characters have a, an interesting story to tell, hopefully at one point. Now, <laughs> as to your character, Alex, you are actually i have to work with you about your background you had the human fighter right yeah cool um so 
you'll just have to bear in mind here for a few minutes. I'm just getting them caught right up to the point, and then I have to work with you a bit when you're rolling this on the, the uh, ship. So you're you're two still on Simba, and you see these fins cutting through the water. Now, what do you want to do, Carly? Because uh, and and Ita for that matter. Um, how long until they would get here? Like how far? Well, if you keep if you just stay at exact as you are. Now, of course, the whale can go quicker mm -hmm. uh, than it is right now. It can really push it. They'll hit you in probably a couple rounds. They're trying to cut you off at an angle. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to start rubbing like herbs, like mistletoe onto the whale and try and prepare for like invisibility to animals, which makes it so that if I like touch the whale, the whale will be completely undetectable. Wow. It's well a first played. level spell. Yeah, and that, that is actually very good for this situation. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, so she gets will... on her hands and knees, she starts like rubbing these like leaves all over the whale as much as she can reach. And start singing in that weird language of your people, an ancient yeah. tongue that the old master taught you. Yeah, like Indian throat singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. And sure enough, the whale, you guys don't notice it, but it does take on a, an aura and you can sense it. Something mystical is happening, something uh, more on a natural magic. You sense something completely different than what you're used to. Nothing spirit or uh, religious about it, or nothing analytical or, or, or you know, alchemy involved. This is straight up spiritualism. But, it, but it's still a, t a type of casting that I would recognize as magic. Yeah, and now you guys are invisible to the, the sharks for how long? Oh, I just looked at that. I have to look at it again. It is. Now I'm going to roll a couple of rolls a minute because sharks have other senses and such, but that's a really good idea for the moment of daylight and it'll buy, definitely buy some time. Yeah, it's only, it's not that long. It's only one turn plus round per level and I'm level one, so. So 10 minutes or so. Yeah. So you quickly, now the sharks of course are suddenly confused as they can't see their prey anymore and they're sniffing around like dogs at this point and you scoot off Simba to a bit of an angle quick let's go and it buys some time and you guys get out and you realize a circling pack now Simba now I, I've talked to you about Simba's capacities right now she could just dive and be gone and mm -hmm. <laughs> she, the, the sharks couldn't keep up with her but you guys would be left and on the other thing too is you can tell Simba to defend. This is giving you a couple of your options. And she is a formidable foe, but you realize there are a lot of these sharks. There was a pack of them. There was at least half a dozen and more. Yeah. And, and you land around. And of course, not swimming, we'll be like fish out of the water. Yes. And yeah. especially the, the fat man, the old guy. Especially, more accurate. Especially the thirty mammals in water. <laughs> mammals in water. Um, as we, uh, it, you said this was a pack around. They were they were cutting you off, and you realized there were more than you thought. They were behind you, and that suddenly when, when you went invisible, it was all they. Of course, were confused, and you guys escaped this ring that they were creating. Hmm. Hmm. Now. Not only that, okay, I'll, no, that's, that's it for now because it's still a bit dusk. It's still not quite light and you're just making out fins and you're just seeing images and blobs. You know, it's, the whale can see quite a bit, uh, but it's still too dark. Your underwater vision is pretty good, Carly, by the way. Okay. Yell for something? Now, I'll give you guys a minute to think about what you'd like to do. Now you're, you're wondering what you should do. It's like, it's, hmm, okay, it's, <laughs> it's a bit odd that sharks normally don't pick on whales. Like I mentioned, unless they're alone or wounded or sick. Uh, so you're wondering, okay, what's, uh, what's yeah. going on. But <laughs> now Alex, your character was a human fighter, correct? And yeah. 
Now, did you have a background in mind? Because I have a couple options for you. Uh, I did have a background in mind. Okay. Um, I went over it with you once, but that was a while ago. Yeah, I know. I remember and parts. On offhand. So uh, she's basically came from a fishing village. She's been using a spear for her entire life, and thus has Great. specialized in it. Uh, she got her basic equipment by selling trinkets and other things she found in the uh, uh, in the lake that was uh, just north of Greyhawk. Uh, oh, she's right. From, she's from a village <coughs> all near uh, near a river and the lake in that area. Uh, I don't have a map of the area, so I wouldn't be able to tell you the name of it. Unless I find my character sheet and I wrote it in there, actually. Now, it, now when I mentioned options, uh, what I meant, too, was like there are a number of reasons why you have to be on this boat. For whatever reason, that's where we're starting this campaign. Oh, okay. So it's, it can be something simple as you're visiting family and you're getting passage or you're fleeing somebody. It depends how dramatic or kind of background you would like. Um, our first two characters so far have been a bit of both. Uh, she's setting off to prove herself. If anything, she's running from her family. Oh, yeah. And from the mundane existence of a fishing village? Uh, she tried to become a guard, but her father wouldn't let her leave the fishing career. Oh, I remember that. You fought him. Uh, and she beat the crap out of him because she's been training for a little while with some of the dwarves that live in Interesting. Town. And she decided that she didn't couldn't look at him again. Mostly because she didn't like him. But she couldn't. She didn't want to ha- feel anger every time she looked at him. So she decided to seek adventure and challenges other. In- so you're young. Uh, yeah. She's ah, 17. I have an interesting idea for you. Okay. Uh, you met now. You <laughs> met a, a young guy, and whatever you guys kind of you hit it off and he happened to be a sailor and he introduced you to the captain of a ship and this was your chance to get out of town okay and the ship captain happened to be looking for uh you know crew members because he's he's on a bit of a smuggling ship now he calls it a merchant ship of course and he claims to pay every toll but you notice that he goes into a lot of docks at night and stuff because you will have been with this ship for about six months okay uh maybe not that long actually maybe just uh, let's say six weeks pardon me and in that time you got on the ship in the azor sea and you went around to the south and exited the sea and along the way you stopped in the various ports and harbors and the, I have names and everything for the crew, and I'm going to get you an avatar shortly so you can see. Can you actually see what's going on? I don't think you can, though, can you? I see the map. Oh, can you see the ship and everything? Uh, no. Why won't it give me? And this actually kind of works out for her because my two non-proficiencies are holding breath and swimming. Oh, really? As well as endurance. So this works out really well for me. <laughs> okay, well, give me a minute now. Describe, are you young? She's 17 years old. Okay. Human. And do you wear armor or anything like that? Uh, she wears chain mail. Now, on the ship, nobody wears armor. Okay. Because unless it's like light leather and stuff, because everyone just like, unless you are specific. Now, if you're going to be employed on the ship, you're going to just be one of the the deck hands. So she would just, she wouldn't be wearing it then. You could have your armor, but you probably wouldn't yeah. wear it while you're on duty. <clears throat> yeah. Just to she, give you a heads up. So uh, yeah, I'll just put it in my inventory. So you can don it if that's the case. Uh, what color is your hair? Tell me it's red. 
Is it red? It's red. It's oh, red. I got a character with red hair. <laughs> Dude, what's your weapon? A, uh, spear. Oh, this is too good. It's uh, I have the picture lined up actually. It's already on my character in roll twenty. Well, I mean, for an avatar. Oh. I found okay. Well, maybe you won't like it, but I think it's like, oh, this is might just be perfect. But when I see it, I'll see it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So you are. What's your character's name? Oh, I see. Like, okay, I see what my piece name is. You want to be Apri Loot, or which one are you? Bake Icky. Uh, her name is Olivia Flory. Is she on here? Yeah, she's in the newbies roster. Now this might be a different roll twenty. Oh, you're not in the right roll twenty game. Then <laughs> I'm in the wrong roll twenty game. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just like, ah, oh, you're not in the. Okay, I'll I'll send you the address. It's uh, that that would that would that's why. Okay. Okay. Meanwhile, you two uh have bought some time, and you, you, the whale shoots out, <coughs> and it doesn't take too long for the the sharks to. And I'm going to give you another uh, 50 XP there, Carly. Very creative. You guys are going to have some combat there potentially, but it didn't. <laughs> uh -oh. do, do they manage to follow us again? Oh, that was some loud sound. You're not sure. You lost him for the moment. But she, okay. she tells you that sharks are notoriously good at tracking. I've got one other, one other thing that can throw them a little bit, but yeah, for now it's risky. It seems okay for now. Uh, now, did you? I sent you that link, so if you join that, I'm just gonna get you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you start a character in the other game? Uh, yeah. Because I can import it. Yeah. The. The character is already set up in the uh, world of Greyhawk. Okay, I'll exit this. I have to exit this game for a minute, and then I can import your character file right in here. So cool, Alex. This is a another campaign I'm starting. It's gonna start out probably uh, two or three modules, and we'll see what happens. If everyone's still good to go, and the part in the story carries on, I have plans, as you've noticed you'll find out these two characters already have quite an intense background. I think they're great characters. You're going to have some fun with them. Uh, you have no idea what you're going <laughs> to Well, you have a bit of an idea. Um, I'm going to be the fighter this time. So uh, yep. maybe I'll get a simple background. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so import existing character sure. from... I have a lot going on right now. And <laughs> uh, your character's name is in Greyhawk. Olivia Foray. She's With an the only o? one in the yeah. She's the there's only there's one like eight hundred characters in here, so I just <laughs> give me a second. Oh, a little, oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah, she's the only one in the newbies section, at least from nice. what I can see. Okay, I just imported her into my archive, so now I have to export her to that game. God, the waves are so loud. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah I remember sweet. reading this. Oh, this is perfect. Wait, do you see the uh, avatar I got for you? Oh yeah, it's great. Um, there it is. Ghosts of so. Oh, damn it. Sorry, I'm taking so long. <laughs> no, it's all getting this set up. That's why I wanted to have these zero sessions was to really build a background and give you guys. Uh, because if we're gonna commit to ten, fifteen sessions. Yeah, I like to have it, but it can't, and then again, a character might get killed uh, pretty quick too. So let's bear that in mind. Jordan has too much going on. I saved Zhang once, but I can't promise that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where was I? Okay, getting this done. But that was a pretty nice heal. Yeah, I got to save Zhang. Well, your character will add a lot to that party. Definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna need more healing spells. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> well, they've got some healing stuff too, but and and Bodica has is a she's like an eighth level cleric. I see you talking over there, but can you guys hear the waves crashing and stuff? Oh yeah. Should I turn it down a little bit? It's a little heavy, isn't it? Just just a little. Thank yeah. you. 
Yeah, no, you you saved Jang there, but uh, <laughs> we uh, we we'd already taken a whole bunch of damage before you showed up. So I know it, it, it was a rough fight. Yeah, I saw the entrance. <laughs> That's a job. Yeah, we uh, we stacked them up like cordwood. <laughs> yeah, that was a bloody affair. All right, there's Olivia. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, this picture is perfect. Let me hook it up for you. Oh yeah. Let me see. Oh, there she is. <clears throat> oh, that would actually work out pretty well, especially with her chain now. Mm-hmm. And that would be Alexander, but you do have okay. Oh right, I have to give you control of Olivia <clears throat> here. Okay, one moment. Alexander. Yeah, I I decided to start a new whole games. Yeah. Because that other one was I had so many maps and so many it was like, holy, this is <coughs> getting nuts. Yeah, and you could just export anything that you needed. Yeah, I got everything, yeah, exactly. Okay, I almost got this figured out. So welcome to the circus, Charlie. I don't know if you're new or not. <laughs> I've played before. <laughs> I don't know if we met before, so hi. We have not. Yeah, Alex, yeah, he's an old gamer. been playing with him for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. We started with 5e, I think, and uh, he's DM'd. I ran a couple of his games, and he ran a couple of mine. I'm kind of getting into this 1e thing. Yeah, it's, yeah I like 1e. It's fun. Okay, so welcome to the Dark Maiden's Dance, the squat little uh, galley that's designed to take on any ocean. This thing can go anywhere. It's got a deep draft, uh, triangular sails designed to tack in the wind and streamline storm damage and such. You can see that the ship itself is sturdily built with intricate pulleys and rope systems that leave you baffled and you kind of have to when you're hired onto the ship you have to prove your ground and you were forced to uh we have to have a little scrap because when he hires you he goes well there's one way you can start on the bottom and swab the decks for the first month lass or you can wrestle grum here and see if you earn the crew's respect from the beginning <clears throat> And Grum is a half orc of with a big pot belly and a loincloth. And he's got this long, about a six foot staff with a gaff on the end and a blade on the other. It's kind of a sailor thing. It's meant it's utility, but yet it's a cruel weapon. And he grins at you with kind of a a leering grin, of course, you being a female and he's but you are cut. I remember you have your strength is what again? It's uh, it's fourteen. It's yeah, nine. so you you're not wimpy or anything, but in your dexterity, you're quick, right? Uh, it's only thirteen. I'm not that fast. Okay. So you can decide hmm. to fight Grom, or you can, for the first while, be the lowest on the rung. Grom oh, looks pretty yeah. tough. Just to warn you, he's not a. Of course, he's a half orc and just some guy. Yeah. Well, you know. Races and everything. Let's kick his ass and find out. And not to be chauvinist or anything, but you see that there's a dwarf that got on the boat at that wharf where you were going to buy a passage. And the dwarf steps in front of you and goes, Hi, lass. I'll take him for ya. And you see this dwarf is built like a brick shithouse, as wide as he is tall. So you think you can pick on the lass? I'll see that you fight me instead. Oh. And he winks. He winks at you, Olivia. Trust me, you can pay me back, lass. Oh yeah, I'll pay you back with an ass kicking. Ha! <laughs> he laughs. laughs. Trust me, this fool. If you want. And then the captain goes. So, the two applicants for the sailing ship won't. Uh, See if they can take on my first mate. Well, Grum, this dwarf looks tough. Do you think you can take this squat little bastard? Grum hates dwarves. 
Mm. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I'll take them both together. Well, this isn't going to be as fun as I thought. And you, well, you can pipe up now, Alex, if you wish. And the captain is kind of, mm, no, no. Let's keep it fair, one on one. If they agree to fight, well, we'll see. And the, the crew's kind of gathering around and starting to clap and whistle a bit. And you see that there are various humans of shade. There's, a, there's an older female woman with an eye patch and the side of her head shaved and a lot of scar tissue down her arm and side. And she seems to be a tough old grizzled sailor. There's another guy named George you heard of who comes up and he's bearded and tough guy, an old timer. There's, <laughs> I'll introduce the crew a bit later. Now, unfortunately, Bill is supposed to be here. He's the dwarf. Oh. Uh, well, I'm going to have to kick his ass when I see him. So, for the moment, though, the captain goes, ah, but we don't have time for this now. We must leave immediately. We'll take the new, the new swabs for now. We can throw them overboard if they don't work out. We got to go, though, and he's looking at the sunrise, and you kind of get the feeling, uh, Alex, that, well, you could jump off this boat right now and kind of, because you're thinking this is more of a smuggler than merchant, and you're looking at half-orc guy, and, but you realize that this dwarf, he's giving you hope if you follow. You know what I mean? Because you were like, I'm, I'm jumping into a ship of wolves here. But this, you know what? I don't really like everyone else, but this dwarf, I like the, I like how he, I just like his confidence. I think I'll stick with him. I think Cord would appreciate that. His old fashioned stubbornness. Oh, yeah. And Plus, so quick. Uh, Cord doesn't like cowards. And the captain starts bellowing orders in this weird kind of sailor slang that you pick up in the bits and pieces. Now, you're being brought up in a fishing town. You, you've been on boats and you've sailed boats. And uh, so that you recognize some stuff, but you're kind of left in, out of the loop for a minute as all of a sudden the, the crew jumps into action and they're unfurling sails and bringing up anchors and moving <clears throat> off before you can change your mind again. And the dwarf looks at you and shrugs. And you see that the, the older woman, she says, I, my name's Abby. Um, I'm not on duty right now, so I can show you down below. And she takes you downstairs through this little hatch or through this uh, cargo hatch, which is open at the moment. And you swing down. We could take the stairs, but I prefer going down this way. And she goes down, deftly, hangs by her arms and drops. And the, the dwarf is like, kind of goes, oh, I'll take the steps. And he goes the other way. And... You, you're tall enough and agile that you go down with her into the hold and down below you're brought down and you look around and you see all sorts of smells and, and sights of cargo that this ship has been accumulating. It's just starting its run, you think. And then he takes you into this commons area where there are two sleeping figures in hammocks and she's going, puts her mouth or she goes, shh. It's common courtesy not to be loud through here because there's always the evening shift sleeping. That's Coop and George. And he points them out. That's your hammock over there. And she points to one that's closest on the other side. Uh, right. What uh, for Olivia? And you can tell it's like a, uh, there's, it's a unisex <laughs> barracks here, <laughs> apparently. You'll be beside the dwarf. She points. Is there anything else I can get you? We're going to be sailing throughout the night. We're heading toward the Olman Islands. Should be there in a couple days. No, I'd rather get my work done, honestly. The captain's probably going to expect you to be working soon. You may want to report for duty. Well, and you can find yourself liking Olivia a bit. You can sense that she's a survivor. And she's got scars and and to show it and she takes off back uh, up on deck to her duty she gets up into the sails or she's off duty actually she goes into the Are you talking about gabby gabby yeah, yeah she goes back into the uh, galley and hangs out 
So I've set up the ship for the moment. You can see George and Cooper sleeping down in the havoc, which is down in the hold. Captain's deck or captain's, she gives you these quick instructions. She's like, captain's quarters off, off. You're not allowed in there. You're not allowed in the passenger's cabin. She doesn't mention who the passengers are. Uh, passenger's cabin's over here. It's in the hold back here. Right. Passengers. Right. And, uh, you 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 do recognize a lot of the boat, like a lot of the, but this is sophisticated stuff. This is deep sea, high end shipping, and you realize that. Oh boy, I have a lot to learn, and I'm gonna fast forward the clock here. Be, and mm -hmm. I would I was interested in role playing some this week, but we have two different parties converging at this point, so I have to push you forward just to give you a flavor of what what kind of ship you're getting into here. Yeah. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what characteristics are, she's not very well, she's not aware, she's not that smart, and she doesn't like talking to people. She's not very good at it either. <laughs> okay. But she, do she doesn't look ugly. Her comeliness is 10, her charisma is 6, and her intelligence and wisdom are both 9. So, uh, but she is physically able. 14 strength, 13 dex, and her, and she bolsters 18 charisma. So you're, the captain summons you up on the deck, and he's captain, he's up here in Temlin, and he's up in the bridge sort of area, and Klipto's this old timer, one of his first mates, second mate, say, Grum's his first mate, apparently, the half orc. Coop is kind of the uh, cook. <laughs> He's in the, the mess, okay. and he cooks the meals. He's actually pretty good. But you're put on duty for the moment, unless you want to challenge Grum. You're put on the pumps for the night. You, the, play, the ship leaks, and every few hours, somebody has to man the pumps. And so, But in between, you're put under the wing of uh, Gabby, who's kind of annoyed that she's been pulled off of her downtime to show you the ropes. <laughs> and so she starts to teach you the craft of the ship. And over the next five, six days, your quick study and you pick it up and you find yourself stripped down the bare clothes, just a little halter top and, and skirt. And you find yourself way up on the sail booms and in the rigging. And he's, uh, but Abby's teaching you different t knots and basically she's been, you've been assigned. That's your mentor is Gabby. Now you don't get Coop and George are, seem to be on night shift all the time. You don't see a lot of them and they don't seem to be interested in socializing much. They seem to be suited to the night. You don't see a lot of them at all. Like it seems when you're busy outside, they're downstairs sleeping. They sleep for about 12 hours or so. And then they, there are, up and about when everyone else is done they man the ship at night fang is a dog they have a dog on the ship uh ralph is the dwarf and he's also learning the ropes so to speak with you there's a halfling named belgrove <coughs> and belgrove is actually a passenger and he got on before you guys got on he's been on the ship for about five days before he got on and he's one of the passengers and he had some money and he's, he just, you, you don't know him really yet. He keeps to his own sort of, they keep you really busy when you're not, you're on the pumps, like your blister, you know, they work you on those pumps. Clipto, the old timer, you seem to, he seems all right. Uh, Grum's an asshole. He, he checks everything and is always critical and, and he, he's quick to, he's got a bit of a whip that he'll pull out and he usually threatens with it, but he'll crack it. Coop stays in the galley a lot. And that's for the next five days, you're put through this grueling cycle where you're just boot camp. You don't have much time to think you're so sore when you're off shift that you just crash in your hammock and sleep. And, uh, you heard through the grapevine, you're wondering like, where are we going? And well, we're heading out, we're crossing the Azor Sea as quickly as we can. And we're gonna be making the run through the Olman Islands, the Pass of Olman. 
and they're apparently approaching it soon and there's a bit of heightened suspense in the ship apparently this is where there's a potential of uh pirates and such and there's they put through some drills uh some and sorry carly and dean i for hanging in i appreciate your patience uh no this is entertaining but i also i don't have very much longer to play either but yeah. I'm, I'm good at listening as well this is this is oh. worthy of my time cool <laughs> same darren i i'm, I'm enjoying the, the the background story yeah okay cool <laughs> And so the ship handles well. You can tell that this little ship is quite a little cork in the water. It zips along. And you find yourself catching on fast. And before you know it, you're given responsibilities left on your own for a while. And again, kept busy. And when you're not doing stuff in the rigging, you're repairing the fishing net, meticulously tying new loops or something like that, or fixing ropes or, and so on. Now, for everybody, I'm going to do this at some point. You have the option here. I'm going to give you the proficiency of seamanship to Alex, okay? Because you basically apprentice to this, and under Gabby and everybody, you learn the, the basics of sailing on a complex sail ship. Then suddenly you see a huge, you were in the open ocean for like four days and it, it kind of made you a bit nervous because being a coastal sea people, you usually were inside of land and you know, once in a while you'd go out, but this time you were way out there and suddenly you see a mass of an island and it looks different. It's not like the, uh, the cedars and, and Douglas firs and stuff of your homeland. This is getting in the tropics and you reckon you see palm trees and, and strange birds as you see this huge landmass, and you're told to the grapevine that these are the Olman Islands. And at one point, we're part of an ancient empire that's extinct now. And you pass by this huge island, and on your suddenly the captain's barking orders, and the ship and everybody's running, and he's you heard uh, sail spotted. And then on suddenly sails spotted and there's a, a degree heading red out and it's apparently to the southish and you don't have a lot of time you happen to be on one of the riggings on the boom alex and the dwarf is more good at the lower stuff but he's the dwarf is surprisingly agile he's actually learning sail seamanship it must be the only dwarf in greyhawk but you're up there and you happen to be near the you're way up high near the uh, crow's nest and there's usually uh clipto's in the crow nest by the way clipto he's the old the older guy and he's got this device you've never seen before it's like this metal tube strapped to kind of a the back end of a crossbow and it's got this weird contraption on it and it's hollow and he showed you once how it works it made this horrific booming sound and this fire shot out of the end of it and he saw a bird explode with feathers. He shot this uh, this big albatross, which were bad luck. And it's, it's some sort of projectile weapon or something, but nothing you've ever seen. The noise it made, your ears were rang for an hour. Yeah, let's stay away from those things for a while. And he laughs, and but he's he's pointing, and he's looking at you. He's, hey, look, lass, over there. And you see... Black sails. And he shudders. You see him turning a bit white. And the, so, and the crew's moving around, and you're, you quickly have to tie your end of the sail. And they've put, they're putting up the extra sails, and they're changing tact and moving a bit away from these black sails. And they're actually lowering the top sail, you noticed. Now, what he's trying to do is lower the silhouette of his ship, because your ship's smaller. The, these black sails must be big, because you can see them, and you're like, holy, these are that's that's a huge that must be like a what is that a four mass ship the one of them it's the uh -oh. biggest ship you've seen now to everyone's relief the ships either aren't interested or didn't see your ship and they just carry on and they head by you through the pass at, di at a distance and everyone's relieved and and there's words fluttered around raiders and black sails and and everyone's just, whoo, and you see the captain's just like, oh, 
all right, boys, back to get that sail back up. Let's get speed. And everyone moves quickly and they're back on track. You're basically, the dwarf is kind of ostracized. You noticed Alex because he's a dwarf and he confides in you though. And you've, you've found that you two just because coincidence, you happen to get on the boat, the same place. And he, he did that first little thing there where he was kind of being a gentleman sort of thing. I don't know, in some weird way as a dwarf could be. He probably meant it as just he wanted to fight the half orc, and he really did. He was like, I'll take him, I'll fight him. And he's big, you know, this dwarf is strong. Yeah, she's actually pretty fine with him because she's more familiar with uh dwarves than most other most other people. Now, I've talked a lot, Alex. I'm, I'm gonna give you a chance now to kind of say over these last five days, you've been worked to the bone, but you have had a bit of time to investigate or ask a few questions or, or try to get a relationship going with other crew members. You can decide, I've, you've, you've met, I think there's seven of them, you know, Coop, Gabby, Ralph, Ralph's the dwarf, so he's already seems to have befriended you. Uh, yeah. Belgrove's passenger, Coop and George, who avoid you, avoid everybody. Not totally, they mingle with a couple crew members, but uh, yeah. Well, besides us two and Belgrove and Fang, there's not a whole lot of people. I'd probably stick to Clip, though, because he seems to be the only one willing to actually show me stuff. Well, he showed you how to use that gun. Yeah. So I'm says he's like, if you ever need to, last, this is how it works. You want to fire it? It's like one night, he's been drinking rum. He's pretty drunk and almost fallen out of the crow's nest. He joined him for a lookout session. He's just kind of teetering around. Should we wake everybody up? She says, it's not my sleep I'm losing. Here you go. Take this. And she puts this contraption in your arms. All right, shove some of this in the top. And he gives you this little horn with a little valve on it. There you go. Push it right in the top. Put it in the top. Yeah, I just How much... follow the instructions. Oh, hey, stop. Snuff, snuff, snuff. Oh, oh. Takes all right, tap it, tap it, tap it. Then he reaches in around another pouch and he pulls out this little he pulls out a handful of these balls and they're all various different size bearings and stuff. And he's just he's he's trying to put them into the barrel and he's pouring them in there, just big fistful of these uh, ball bearings. Ah, that should do it. Tap it again, lass. Now pull back on that lever and pull that thing in a jigger. Put it good in your shoulder. And try to point it kind of upright. Now, if you don't want shit to pour out the front, you have to stuff something else down there. But point it upright for now. We don't have time for that shit. <laughs> All right. And you pull the trigger, and it dislocates your shoulder almost. Ow. Uh, the, the shock of this, you weren't quite ready, or you, you might have shot a crossbow in your day, but this the kick, it just, boom, it felt like some donkey kicked you in the shoulder. And make a dexterity check for me. Uh, that's just uh, less than my dexterity. Equal or less to you. Uh, no, that's definitely higher. So you're knocked over backward out of the crow's uh, nest. Now, fortunately, he's going to try grab you. Oh, shit. He's drunk. <laughs> he's probably better when he's drunk. <laughs> So he grabs you by the <coughs> legs as you're dangling off the side and you're hold, you held onto his rifle. Don't drop the gun! <laughs> and you manage awkwardly to pull each other up and you guys have a moment, you laugh and weigh it and he, gives you a, he offers you a swig of rum and, and he goes, ah, I don't know why you jumped on this boat. You're looking for adventure, you silly lass. Well, you've got it. You be careful though. This crew, some of them... Well, and he's, you can see he's really drunk and he's just kind of talking shit. He's like, I don't, you know, don't trust that Coop guy and George. I don't like him. Never see him. Picked him up a little while back. They've been on board for about a month or so. Gabby, she's okay. She's me and her go back. We were on the old silver hand way back. Oh, 12 years ago now. And Fang's her dog, by the way. Coop's all right. 
And the captain, uh, the captain's a son of a bitch. He'll put you on the plank. Don't cross him. That makes sense. And then he kind of nods off in the crow's nest and leaves you, and you kind of pick up the watch and just watch him for those black sails until you're relieved later on. The next day, Clipto's uh, up in the nest again, hung over, and everybody's doing their shifts, and you're back. You, you spend about three hours up in the rigging, running around like a gopher, adjusting stuff. And then Clipto, he's, he bellows out, ah, plume. And when he hears, says the word plume, a lot of the crew members look up grinning, ah, bonus, bonus. They start to yell, bonus, bonus. And Temlin comes up from his crew quarters. I heard flute. What, where? What degree, Clipto? Tell me. And Clipto's got his telescope out. And he's looking. 260 degrees, Captain. Quarter mile. Oh, it looks like a... Uh, I'd say it's a female. Uh, we may be able to intercept. The winds are on our side, Captain. Captains. Ah, bonus, boys. A bonus. Okay. You, dwarf, lass, come here. Off the rigging. He, the captain bellows you down. All right, I'll climb down. Assist Grum and George with the ballast and get out the harpoon. Ah, we got a whale to catch, lads. Extra money. Uh-oh. <laughs> set, set bearing, he yells out. Full sail ahead. And the ship heads towards this, these plume, this plume. Now, Carly and team. <laughs> yes, Darren. <laughs> you guys are on moving along, and you you thought you saw this black sails at some point, and then night came again, and you were like, "Damn it!" And you had to rest and do your thing, and you lost them again. And the next morning, they're not on sight. But that's when you see, that's when the encounter with the pack happened. And so at the moment you were distracted as you avoided the pack, invisible wise, and you made good, you escaped their circle. And you're heading north when you noticed a sail. And this mm. sail is blue. Mm. Oh, I'm about to kill the whale, but do I get XP for killing the whale? <laughs> now, you're not, no, no. Not what happens on the ship is that uh, Grum is right away, he's in charge. And he's like, move your asses, lass, you dwarf. He spits, get that gear. And he starts giving orders and they have to assemble this, this ballista. And it's going to take a, a bit of time. And they bolt it on and such like that. And he's, he's rigging it up on the left side. And he's like, get that coil of rope over there. You fetch the harpoons. And he's issuing orders and the, the crew's in full unison. They're all, a lot of them are keen, you know, about getting a bonus, getting a whale. They're worth a lot of money. Sorry, Garly. Gotta get that bonus. <laughs> <laughs> See about that. <laughs> now, you guys had drills where you were, you set up the, the there was ballast, there's two ballista, and you guys had drills where you were supposed to set them up, and set them off, dry fire them, and then put them back. You know, that's the drill they would have. So you guys knew what you were doing. And you can actually shoot these things if you wish. And you're quickly assembling this. Now back to Carly, and your visibility is going to wear off soon. And the last time you saw fins, they were, they were, you'd left that circle and, and got a little ways away, but they would picked up your scent somewhat and were following. And they're close behind. Mm. And they're behind you and the ship's in front of you. And so far the ship is just sailing and it turns. You see the ship turn and head toward you. And it's probably a half mile away, but it's going to close quickly with your speed and its speed. Uh, you estimate that you'll be a couple rounds. You'll be close enough. Uh, you're not sure what you want to do if you wanted to drop off this, this extra cargo because you know what you can do. Yeah. And the whale can hold its own too. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. You saw there were a lot of sharks though. You're a bit nervous and so you're not sure what's to come. Mm. I'll uh, point the sail 
um, Ita, a lot like points. Do you know blue sales? Blue sales, good, bad. Blue sales, not bad. Um, don't know, don't know blue sales, but not black sales. <laughs> Say you know knowledge. <laughs> like <laughs> look back and um. Dry desert knowledge, not not ocean knowledge. <laughs> Oh, Carly, she doesn't know what a desert is. <laughs> you witnessed the rape and pillage of your village and people from a distance. You were up on this volcanic edge and such. And so you saw that this ship's smaller and it's not like the other ships. Mm -hmm. and, it, and you can't make out more details. It's a bit shimmering distance and such. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can probably talk to them. Uh, no, I can. We have to get away from the shark talk to them good 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 so i yeah i guess we continue forward then because we're uh, not metagaming <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's, that's true in this is circumstance of course you've known the narrative conversation we have to talk to you about <laughs> <laughs> now you guys have the ballista almost assembled and you're going to be in range you figure probably in a round or two and Grum is, you've had a knack for firing this thing. So I'm giving you another proficiency, Alex. And oh, God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away your hold breath, if that's okay. Because I'm giving you a couple. And uh, no, actually keep that one. Because actually that's a nice, go ahead, keep that one. No, no, it's fine. But you're going to get uh, exotic weapons because you trained with that ballista. Or heavy Art weapons? Artillery? <laughs> yeah. So Grum is like, man the ballista, and he's taking command. He's up on the ledge. All right, you fire when I say. I remember to lead the beast like we practiced with the barrels. You know how it works? Olivia? Uh, yes. Uh, sir. You better not miss, or I'll have your hide, you silly bitch. And he has his whip out. You should miss just to spite him. <laughs> Now, the dwarf is there as well, and he just brought back a, a couple extra harpoons with rope, and he's putting them on the deck so they can easily be reloaded and, and discharged, and he's connecting the other ends. And, but he's, he looks up at Olivia with kind of a little sideways look, and, and he's like, good luck, lass. Do us well. We trained for this. What do you see? And you got pretty good eyes. You're young, and... You're looking, and sure enough, you can see this whale moving at speed towards you guys, which is, hmm. All right. We don't so, see anyone on it? Uh, all you see is, well, it's too far. You can just see oh, its okay. plume once in a while, and you see something cutting, and you're looking, and you're looking, and it's going to be in range soon, and it's still dawn, and so on. Now, meanwhile, back... This is the round previously back on the whale. You suddenly <laughs> three sharks come out of the water suddenly to your right and move in to attack. So we have to roll initiative on, on the whale. Now you see something happening, Alex. You see some activity to the left of the whale as your perspective. And you see some creatures suddenly come out and you sense for a second you're not sure, but then it disappeared. You thought you saw somebody clinging to one of these sharks. And then it disappeared under the water. And you've heard tales of beings that live in the deep and that have used some of the other creatures like sharks. So anyway, for a minute, you're like, what's going on here? And then you look at the whale and you see that there's there's riders on the whale too. Uh, Grum, there's people on the sh on on the whale. Yeah, and whatever. You're seeing illusions. Get ready to fire. And there's sharks. Pfft, sharks will get them too. They can't harm us. Get ready to fire. He's almost in range. You see? Don't forget to lead him. He's coming right to us. He gives out a chuckle. Uh, Dara, how close to us are the sharks? Uh, about 25, 30 feet. They did a surprise attack. 
I'm going to use a uh, a light spell to to get one of the one of the ones in the middle, and and light up a whole area around them so that they can they can really easily Ooh. see the sharks. Nice, uh, Carol initiative. I got a two. Now, Olivia, roll initiative for me. Okay. And get reaction bonus if you have high dex. I had 20 or 13. Now, you see that there are these large hammerhead sharks that are going to attack the whale. And there's also at least one rider on the whale. This is like you're a bit baffled. Um, Grum doesn't doesn't seem to have the same eyes and he's half orc so the sunlight's glaring and then suddenly you see this flash of light in the water and it lights up the side and it lights up the silhouette the side silhouette of the shark and you see the shark it's about to jump up and attack and you just have this decision to make something tells you to shoot and Grum says shoot he yells uh, Cord, I hope you're right. And I point to the fucking shark. <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna have to you're gonna have to answer to Grum now. Uh, shouldn't promise a good time. Go ahead, uh, roll twenty sided for your shot. And okay, it's at distance, and that is a miss. And the harpoon shoots off the left, and Grum is like, "You idiot! You missed!" And and he's is stupid enough. He's not sure what the lights about or whatever. But you missed the whale. He's just focused on the whale. It's like, ah, that's worth a fortune. And his whip comes cracking down on you viciously, and he goes, "Reload!" He does two points damage. He whips you like four times. Crack! 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 I have my spear on me, right? It's close by. Okay. <laughs> Reload, fool! And he's got his whip. And the dwarf looks at you. This whole lass. Perhaps he yeah, have an idea. And you see he's subtly going to the... He says, load this harpoon. And he takes. he's going to the other end of the coiled rope. Distract him for me. And he's walking huh. toward... Uh, and he's kind of getting up slowly behind Grum. <laughs> now, back on the whale, uh, you guys won initiative. And so you see this, this harpoon come shooting out. Suddenly you realize you're being attacked or something, but the harpoon misses the whale and you, and it seemed like it was going more to the, toward the shark. Uh, perhaps the, the ship is an ally a much needed ally, but for the moment, two more sharks lunge forward. And the, the whale at this point is just busy moving, so it's not really attacking or anything. But so you guys, one initiative, what do you do? Now the light spell goes off. Oh, hold on. That light flash does distract the sharks. They're minus two. Yeah, because it, it's a 20-foot radius, so the, the shark that I cast it on was one in the middle, so that hopefully all the others were surrounded by a big bright light too. Right. But it's on one of the ones in the in the cluster. Gotcha. Um, are they in trident range? Are they like there? Yes, as like, one glunges yeah. forward, you're ready. Yeah, I want to impale it. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. So you have a now because you have a ranged weapon like trident, you can attack it before it, they're charging. So you can actually if you can you? brace the trident as well. Okay, yeah. I got a nineteen. Uh, wow, nicely done. <laughs> uh, so I roll damage. Trident does one die eight. Yeah. Oh, nice. You skewer start. this thing right through, the, well. right through the snout before it can bite or do anything. You just skewer and flip to the side. Ah! And, you, you, and you're just like, holy shit. These characters are like, whoa. <laughs> and you kill this thing. It, Wow. It's It was like a 12-foot shark. Holy shit. Sensory yes. overload. You, you nailed him right in the sensory organs. <laughs> yeah, damn. The other shark is close, but the whale 
All of a sudden, flicks real quick. Now, Dean, make a dexterity check. Okay. One of the flukes goes up and down real quick and smacks one of these sharks, and you guys just hear this squishy crunch. Yeah, I passed that one by a bunch. Okay, so Dean, like you're 10. almost thrown off. You would have fallen off there as the ship did a quick twist. You kind of went, whoa. And, <laughs> but you managed to grab onto the fluke and, or the top fin and just grab on. And this thing went up, and you see one of these sharks is just crushed. It snapped in half. And two of them are left. One's a bloody mess as you quickly pull your trident out like an expert, as you were trained to do. Uh, now, next round, you can, the, the whale kind of gives you out a hoot of what to do. It can, it can leave you now and flee at the, at the ship. It can go along the ship. Take us towards the back. Get it, get him to go towards the back of the ship. The other end from the, where that, that missile came from. Okay. That spear. I'll, um, yeah, I'll do what he says. I'll, I'll ask Simba to do that. To the back. Okay, so the whale turns and angles, and you can see there's about six or eight sharks closing in. Um, and you, it, you surge forward, the, the whale, and it gets ground <clears throat> and angles quickly around the back of the boat as the boat is moving toward you. The boat's moving at about 15 knots. It's really moving pretty quick, but the whale can move fast. And the whale goes around behind and it, and you see the whale suddenly launch up out of the water and get gains <clears throat> probably about 18 feet out of the water and it's arching its back and it's, it's your chance to jump onto the back deck of this boat. Okay, take it. I'm taking that option. <laughs> I don't want to be, the, I don't want to still be on there for the dive. <laughs> so make a dexterity check to see how this goes. Oh God, please please. Work. Yeah, okay, we're good. Ten. Both both made it? Yeah, I got yeah. a nine, so I'm good too. I'm good. Hey, the whale gives out this forlorn kind of sad goodbye. This big hoot. So as long. It, I give the as big Pokemon. It hits the water and disappears in the black depths. There's, a, there's about seven, eight sharks try to follow it, but it just goes deep, 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 deep. Yeah, she'll be okay and out of sight. And you two are jumped onto the back deck into the startled presence of this character in sort of these tattered flamboyant clothes. He's got like a ruffled shirt and he's got amazingly enough a peg leg. He looks like a, he's got a big old ruffled beard and he's, he's, got his, he's got his scimitar out and he's back and he's like, Grum, get over here and Grum's turned. Now, just as Grum does that, the dwarf goes, fire. Oh, yeah. To Alex. Uh, I won't even really need to aim. I am going to kind of shoot the crowd of sharks. Yeah. And so you saw one of the sharks that was going in and, and you fire. And now he tied the rope to Grum's ankle. I don't know anything about that. So make a <laughs> die 20 roll. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that was a one. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? So it was either really good or really bad. Okay, you hit the whale, and that drags Grum down to a depth. <laughs> depth. The whale feels a pain in its back as this harpoon oh. hits it. Is it my whale? Yeah. <laughs> And the Grum gets shot off the side of the deck. I mean, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That, that didn't happen. The whale was in the wrong spot. And you totally whiffed. Uh, and Grum is, realizes that the, the, the contraption misfires and locks. And Grum, looking down, he, he spins around and, what's going on here? And the dwarf had quickly pulled the rope back. It's jammed. It's jammed, Grum. Can't you see that? It first made it's jammed. And Grum's like, hmm. And he whips the dwarf 
And the dwarf's like, that's it. You and me. Now. And the captain bellows out, you two, stop it. We have inv these two here. Grum, get up here. Dwarf. And Grum's looking at you and Alex, or the dwarf. I'll deal with you later. And he strides up to the captain. Aye, captain. We got some stowaways, Grum. I'd uh, beg to differ your, your pardon, uh, Captain. Uh, I don't believe we stowed away uh, at all. We just dropped in. Hmm. It looks like you'll be working for free, unless you care to walk the plank. I don't imagine that would affect her too much, but uh, I'm more the scholarly type. I'll, I'll pref I prefer to do it by walking on, on solid surfaces. And they're, they're kind of looking Carly's character up and down too. And, and you see the half-orc now, you see that there's a half-orc and this grizzled captain, they give each other kind of knowing look. I right, we'll put you to work for now. Nagy will show you the ropes. Everyone to your stations. The whale's gone. To work. If it gets us back to dry land, I'll, I'll, I'll work for the, uh, for the passage. Oh, we'll get you to dry land. And there's a laughter kind of goes <laughs> through them. And we're going to end the session there. Uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> it's good. A lot of fun. <laughs> and it's an introductory session to get you guys on the boat, of course. And I I kind of stretched a little bit and had a little bit of fun. Yeah, thanks, Darren. It was good. Yeah. Very yeah. impromptu. Too. <laughs> lots of uh, lot lots of improv there. We'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you another night, Carly. Yeah, if you got to run. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, and, and who knows? I might have some optional sessions this week just to flesh this out a bit more. And if uh, officially the module is going to kick yeah. in, and then things are going to be a bit more out of my hands. But I'll, I'm going to keep it more on a light note like this, and the ability, okay. you know, things have changed. It was a lot of fun, uh, and we'll get to know the yeah. crew now. You guys are now part of the crew. Basically. Okay. Good enough. And yeah. you might be put to, in, to work in the galley <laughs> as the cook. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cool. All right, everybody. Thanks a bunch. I'll yeah, post some stuff. You. Yeah, I got to go get some food and things. And Yeah, I'm excited to play again. Thanks, Darren. You bet. It'll be yeah. fun. It's, good to see yeah, it's almost 10 for me, so I got to run too. Night, Alex. We'll see you another day. Night, Darren. Yeah, see ya. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Carly. How do I leave? Just exit? Meeting. I think you can just right. X out. Yeah. Yep. Please. Please take care. All right, Alex. I'll uh, we'll keep in touch. That's, that's we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping I didn't overrun everything too much, and I was gonna have a scrap there, but I think it's gonna happen between Grum and you or or the dwarf. You're definitely uh, gonna have. To I think have that two v one is gonna happen because I was about to just suggest. I'm what I I was about to suggest charging him with my spear <laughs> and then all of a sudden hey we take over the ship that's could be an option <laughs> all right uh, that would be a fucking good start where grum takes fucking double damage from a charge yeah i thought you might attack him or something too and i was gonna say okay let's see how this goes and uh next time i'll be a bit more ready i didn't I, a lot of this was like i said improv it was just throwing together things a lot of fun uh, I'll keep in touch, buddy. I gotta go. Uh, see you later. All right, see ya.